Welcome back to the Tiger's Den Podcast, guys. I'm your host, Big C. Before we get started, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. And don't forget to hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook at Big C Got Game. And make sure you ring that bell and join the Noti Squad. Well, the season is over. And talk about a disappointing end to such an amazing season. Our Tigers lose on the last play in the national championship game. 28-27 to was the final. I'm not going to lie, I had a game plan going into this matchup, and we followed it to the T. But one play, one play caused us the crystal ball. We won't dwell in the loss. Our winning streak comes to an end, but now it's time to look ahead to an important offseason. But first, here's a look at some of our season stats. Sophomore Phil Austin had a big year throwing the ball, 3,233 yards, 34 touchdowns, but 20 interceptions. We opened up the offense this year for Phil. At times, he was inconsistent, but Austin impressed me a lot this year. And now he goes into his junior year as a possible Heisman candidate. In the backfield, is there any doubt that Charlie Brooks is the best running back in college football? This year, he fell 91 yards short of 2,000 yards rushing, but he got into the end zone 29 times. We say goodbye to senior back Will Higgins. He finished with 874 yards on the ground and 11 touchdowns. Higgins was a dynamic player, and his explosiveness will be missed. Out wide, no other freshman has had a bigger impact than tight end Rob Bradford. 49 grabs for 604 yards and 9 touchdowns. He was Austin's most reliable target. Second on the team was the senior, Daryl D.J. Clark. 47 grabs for 659 yards and four scores. The leader of the receiving core will be missed next year, but he will be handing the torch to breakout star this year, Chad Terrell. He finished his first season with the Tigers with 36 grabs for 635 yards and 13 touchdowns. C. Tizzle will be a junior next year and will be wide out number one on the depth chart. We talked about Will Higgins running the ball, but he was just as dangerous as a receiver. 35 grabs for 482 yards and three scores. Sophomore Demetrius Gunn broke out on the scene last year, but had a bit of a down year this year with 26 grabs for 435 yards and three scores. On defense, what can we say about Josh Carey? He plays all over the field from his linebacker position. He led the country in tackles with 135. He also added seven sacks and led the team with six interceptions. Going into his junior year, he needs to work on putting on some weight and getting better in zone coverage. Our D-line had a breakout year led by freshman D.N. Richard Maynard and his 15 sacks. Big Cam Richardson had 10 sacks on the year and fellow freshman Marvin Goff had seven. The three D linemen with the addition of incoming freshman Torian Ray will cause havoc over the next few years. We say goodbye to our shutdown corner and return specialist John Nichols. He shut down an entire side of the field and led the DB room. We also say goodbye to seniors Deontay Bridgewater at safety and Markel Jackson at linebacker, two of our defensive leaders. So it's time to head to the offseason, and first up is the coaching carousel. For the past two years, we have lost coordinators, and the same happened this year. Out are Presley and DeBauer. In is Jeremy Pruitt at defensive coordinator after being fired from Baylor, and first-time offensive coordinator Chris Pleasant. Here's a look at the players leaving this year, and this is a special group of seniors. DJ Clark, Deontay Bridgewater, John Nichols, Will Higgins, Markel Jackson, Donald Freeman, just to name a few. They helped shape and build the groundwork for this Grambling State program. We send a huge congratulations shout out to Daryl DJ Clark. He was drafted in the third round, the only player drafted, which is a shocker. Now we look ahead to the future. We sim ahead to recruiting, and we have two big names at the top of our board that we are focused on. Athletes Mike Collins and Sean Edwards. These two would add to an already solid class. So we decide to put all our points into these two stars and take a chance with the rest of the board. And welcome the two newest members to the class of 2020. Welcome five-star athlete Mike Collins from Michigan and five-star athlete Sean Edwards from Arizona. These two have been talking about playing together all season, and they both choose to bring their talents to Grambling, Louisiana. 
Now, we did lose out on several other players on the board, but we are excited about the class we have in place. We finished with the number 17 ranked class in the nation, top in the Sun Belt. So where will these guys be playing next season? Sean Edwards will join an already stellar receiving group, and Mike Collins will move to free safety. Three-star athlete Will Davis joins the linebacking core. Here's some other changes. Freshman Chris Ferrada came in as a strong safety, but he's moving to right outside linebacker and will push for playing time in his freshman year. DeAndre Hodges moves to middle linebacker to battle Najee Gordon for the starting linebacker job. The Tigers hit the gym and summer workouts, and here are the training results, and we have some big numbers. C. Tizzle is now a 96 overall. Demetrius Gunn moves up to a 94 overall. Phil Austin gets a plus 5, is now a 92 overall. Josh Carey gets a plus 4 and is a 91 overall. And CB23 gets a plus 6 and is a 91 overall. Taking a look at the complete roster, backup quarterback Jeremy Higbottom got a plus 6 going into his senior year. In the backfield, redshirt freshman Joel Thomas gets a plus 6. It's going to be an interesting year for him because Brooks and Thomas are the same type of back. Ladarian Ellis Jones gets a plus five. He's a solid third back option. Out wide, we're going to be stacked. Austin will have tons of weapons. The group is led by C. Tizzle and D. Gunn, but Malik Rout gets a plus five. Gerald Cox gets a plus four. Seldom use LaDamian Brooks gets a plus five, and Quentin Geis gets a plus four. Add in Sean Edwards and Jordan Paxson. This group is going to be scary. At tight end, we have Rob Bradford, and that's all we need. Big Rob gets a plus four. Excited to see what he could bring in his sophomore year. There are a few concerns on the offensive line. Left tackle Mark Griffin gets a plus four, and his backup easily gets a plus five. At guard, senior Alex Blunt gets a plus four. At center, Keith Johnson gets a plus six, and so does backup Golden. But look for him to start at right guard. On the right side of the line, we're hurting a little bit. Freshman Otis Allen gets a plus five and will push for a starting job against Golden. At right tackle, Joseph Garza gets a plus four, but easily could slide over and play on the right side. To the defensive side of the ball, and I'm excited for the D-line this year, Richard Maynard gets a plus five. Marvin Goff also gets a plus five, and big Cam Richardson and Jason Brown get that plus five. The starting D-line will cause havoc with the addition of incoming freshman Torian Ray. At linebacker, Josh Carey leads the way with a plus four. Inside linebacker is going to be a battle this year. Senior Najee Gordon and DeAndre Hodges will battle for the number one spot. On the right side, Traylon Don gets the plus four. He might play backup to Chris Ferrada this year. Here's where things get a little interesting. At corner, we have a deep group, but they are young. Returning starter Ron Bennett gets a plus four and will have a chance to move into quarterback number one. Junior James Heron gets a plus five, and he got faster this year. Fred Harris gets a plus five. McConnell gets a plus five and adds to his world-class speed. Fields gets a plus four. Lawson gets a plus five, and Green gets a plus five. This group is deep with the additions of the nation's number one corner, Rayshon Baker and Brent Stovall. In the spring game, we'll see who stands out and who will get playing time. At free safety, Justin Victorian gets a plus five, but he will be pushed by five-star recruit Mike Collins. And at strong safety, senior Brian Smith gets a plus four, and his backup, Will Gibson, gets a plus five. Special teams, sophomore Nick Gordon gets a plus six and will have double duty this year as a kicker and a punter. So there's been a discussion in the comments section which conference should Grandma State move to after dominating in the Sunbelt Conference for the past two years. So the Tigers this year are taking their talents to the SEC West. And Texas A&M will be moving back to the Big 12 along with Houston with a playoff game held inside of Jerry's World. Also, after being independent for three seasons, Southern University moves to the Sun Belt Conference. Now that Grandpa State is in the SEC, things get a lot tougher. Here's a look at our schedule. We open up against SMU. Then SEC play starts up at Florida. Then Georgia comes to the hole. We play at Arkansas and Mississippi State back-to-back -back weeks. Return home to face Auburn. Back on the road to face LSU. Home for Ole Miss. Then we have the Bayou Classic versus Southern. Back on the road versus Missouri. Then we have our rematch with Bama at home this year. Then we close out with Senior Night hosting Purdue. 
It's going to be an interesting season, but I hope you guys are ready for a fun year. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. And don't forget, hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook at Big C Gad Game. And SEC, get ready. Grambling State's coming for that number one spot. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.